With its variety of missiles, the flanker can fight from a distance or at close quarters. One of its requirements was to escort the Su-24 fencer bombers to their targets. While the squadrons took off, the Aleutian A-50 AWACS got itself into position to control the battle. The flankers led the bombers towards the target area. Guided by the AWACS and literally blasted away through any enemy attack using their range of missiles. Until the way was clear for the bombers to drop their load. Even by 1987, the West hadn't had a good look at the Su-27. But one of its first encounters turned out to be too close for comfort. A Norwegian P-3 Orion patrol plane met two flankers. One of the flankers got too close and hit one of the Orion's props, damaging both aircraft with bits of the prop flying through the Orion's fuselage. Now the West had seen Russia's mystery aircraft, its aviation industries were suddenly spurred into action. 1989, the Paris Air Show was the first time that the Western crowds were to witness for themselves how true the rumours had been about the Su-27. Was it as agile and potent as they'd been led to believe? Test pilot Viktor Pogachev left them in no doubt at all with his dazzling display. He pulled his 22-ton aircraft straight off the runway into a vertical figure of eight within an 800-metre frame. Pugachev stunned the crowd with a manoeuvre never seen in the West before. Pugachev's Cobra, a move that he'd invented himself and that was to become an international trademark for the Sukhoi. The aircraft flew straight and level, then pitched its nose up to 120 degrees. Pugachev then pushed the stick forward and into level flight again. No other fighter anywhere could do the Cobra. It seemed that the rumours were true after all. This was indeed a truly remarkable aeroplane. Its chief test pilot, Vladimir Ilushin, was in no doubt at all. Before flying this aircraft, I piloted vehicles of 142 different types and always came to know that I was, so to say, more intelligent than a flying machine and more capable than it was. In the case with the Sukhoi Su-27, it was the other way around. It appeared to be more intelligent than me. The aircraft is more capable than a pilot. So, in order to use its great potential, a pilot's self-perfection is essential. Moreover, when I piloted the Su-27 for the first time, I understood this was the aircraft you could wait all of your life. It's worth being a pilot of this fighter. On account of a delight I felt in the air, a smile doesn't range from my face till now. I'm sure that everyone who will pilot the fighter will feel the same way. The Russian Navy had planned to build four new aircraft carriers to take them into the 21st century. In fact, only one was completed. But even that needed new aircraft. Sukhoi began by altering its basic Su-27 design by fitting canard four-planes, an arrestor hook, a beefed-up undercarriage, a refueling probe, and twin nose wheels. Land trials were started at Saki in the Crimea on a dummy landing deck with arrestor wires and a ski ramp for takeoff. It's understood that during these trials, 
at least one Su-27K was in fact lost. Other changes to the basic 27 were that the distinctive tail cone section was shortened to miss the deck on landing and rotating. There was also the plumbing available to carry an external fuel tank. Trials went on day and night until it was felt safe for Viktor Pogachev to find the aircraft carrier Tbilisi and to land on it for the first time. He refueled in the air and tracked in towards the carrier. Then lined up for his final approach. First time around was a touch and go just to get the feel of the pounding ship. Then a second attempt. Third time lucky. Yes, on the third attempt, he brought the flanker in for a perfect deck landing. Where Mikhail Simonov and the engineers and crew were waiting to give him a hero's welcome. Pugachev's historic landing was made on November the 1st, 1989. His takeoff run proved that the Su-27K could get into the air after a ski run of 100 meters, or 328 feet, with no catapult. It was soon the turn of his heir apparent, the young Yevgeny Frolov, to bring his aircraft in for a perfect landing on the Tbilisi. He got the customary welcome from the waiting crew. Later, the carrier changed its name to the Kuznetsov and the aircraft uprated to the Su-33. The great rival for the naval contract came from Sukhoi's arch competitor in the form of the MiG-29 KVP. It too had wings that folded for stowage. To get full power before takeoff, the Russians use this very simple chocking system built into the deck. Once the aircraft is at full power, the retaining chocks simply disappear. Although the MiG was an equally fine aircraft, which had been well proven over the years, it was Sukhoi who won the contract to supply its 33s to the Russian Navy. However brilliant an aircraft seems, accidents and failures will happen, as this MiG-29 pilot found out. <laughs> 